today we're playing around with the Legacy a little bit. Uh, I've probably been driving this thing for about a month now, maybe a month and a half, and I've noticed there's something about it that I'm not super happy with. Pulling out into traffic here. Now that we're rear-wheel drive converted, um, you know, all of our power is going through this little R160 rear diff. Uh, and I've kind of been toying with the, you know, whatever I want, like a welded diff or a limited slip. Uh, and obviously an open diff just won't cut it because you're always spinning one tire all the time because this motor is so much low end torque. I don't really want to weld a diff just because it's really hard on axles and it chirps around in parking lots and yeah, it's just not, not going to be good for me. Right now I have an R160, a plated uh, VLSD is what they call it. Uh, and it just seems really loose and unresponsive and it doesn't walk, lock up quite as quickly as I like. Uh, now there are some other options out there for diffs, but uh, they're expensive and they're difficult to find because they came in the STI version. So what I am attempting to do is to tighten up this limited slip by shimming the plates in the viscous clutch pack. So we're gonna go back to the shop and take the diff out and get this thing all apart and see what we can do. Okay, so I'm sure someone's gonna correct me if I'm wrong here, but uh, as far as I know, the Subaru VLSDs are actually considered a 1.5 way limited slip. Uh, it's not a ramping style, but the idea behind it is sort of, it's actually almost the same design as the center differentials that are viscous slip for Subarus. Um, and basically what happens is you have a certain preload on their clutch plates, inner and outer clutch discs, and there is a friction um, uh, viscous grease that's in there that helps the clutches grab tighter as soon as there's heat put into them. So when they start slipping, they generate heat and then they expand and grab better, right? So, but the problem with these differentials is that uh, they're pretty notorious for like if someone off-roaded them a lot um, and you had one tire slip in a bunch, they just wear out. The, the stack up isn't quite right anymore on the clutch plates and then they'll never generate heat and then they never grab again because they're just too loose. So what I have done in the other one, it's actually pretty successful, I'm gonna show you guys here today, is I actually took the viscous portion apart on the carrier and shimmed the, the clutch packs so that we had uh, a higher breakaway torque on the, the differential, which helps, especially for our car, because it's rear-wheel drive converted, um, but it's still not chirping around in the parking lot, and the back end doesn't want to kick her out all the time, but it's definitely a lot more responsive, uh, and you get a lot less one tire peeling out uh, when you're taking off from a start, and things like that. So it does make it a lot nicer to drive, and the nice thing about doing this is, as long as we're careful about taking off the caps and putting them back on in the same spot and not changing any of the shim stack ups. We don't have to mess with any of the bearing preload or the, the contact patch on the ring and pinion. So we can literally just take this apart, take the viscous portion apart, shim it, put it back together, call it a day. So let's get started. Okay, so what I've done is I've gone ahead and made some punch marks on either end of the bearing caps. This bearing cap has two or just one on each piece and then this bearing cap has two on each piece so that I know that whatever side I pull these caps off of they go right back on the same side with the same amount of shim on each side so we're not changing the gear position. By the way guys, uh, just want to let you know we already cleaned this entire differential because it was disgusting and coated with, uh, with grease and all kinds of road grime and stuff so this is not going to look as nice when you do it if you do decide to do it. You can typically reuse this as long as it comes off in one piece and it isn't damaged. And then all I do is I clean up the mating faces and just reuse this. It's just kind of a crushed gasket, steel gasket, with uh, some, uh, some kind of sealant coated on the outside of it. Okay, so what I was saying earlier, all these bearing caps, they're shims. 
And these shims set not only the preload on the bearings, but they set the gear position depending on what stack up you put on each side of the carrier. And so you definitely don't want to get these shims mixed up from side to side because you'll change the position, which would not be good. So, and if you notice here, there's these notches on the shims here, and these notches line up to that notch where I put the tick mark in it that lines up with the top of the diff. So I just want to keep those lined up. And this bearing cap comes off. And then what you have to do is you kind of have to orient the carrier with the flat, the opening where the spider gears are here. And then you can kind of turn it sideways, pop it out. All right, so before we take this apart and shim it up, uh, what I want to do is get a baseline reading for what the breakaway torque is. Uh, and then that way we can increase it from there because I don't I want to make sure that I'm adding the correct amount of shim I don't want to over shim it make it too tight things like that so um, what I have here is got this thing clamped in my vise only on the carrier I'm not clamping the gear just the carrier and then I have this makeshift little spline adapter that's got a hex on the end of it that I put in and then I'm just gonna set my torque wrench I'm just gonna keep increasing my torque wrench to figure out what the breakaway torque is so right now I'm at zero. So we'll go to 30. Okay. So if I'm set pulling on it steady, it, it goes like almost right at 30. Yeah, so we're about 30 foot pounds of breakaway torque right now. And what I want it to be is about 80. So we're going to shim this bad boy until we get 80 foot pounds of breakaway torque. Okay, so what I've done is I've gone ahead and made a little sharpie mark here that lines up with these lines on the carrier. Um, just so that when I take the pinion gear off, I put the pinion gear back on in the same orientation. I don't know that it matters rotationally, um, but another thing to note is that these tick marks here they line up because this lower part, the thicker part, is the carrier, and then this is the cap for the viscous clutch pack. So I've gone ahead and just made sure that everything's lined up with that because when the cap for the viscous clutch pack goes back on, it will need to be lined up with this line so that you don't, that is important, you don't want to change the orientation of that. Tap it off, and then once the ring's out of the way, there are four of these Phillips head cap screws, or these Phillips screws that hold the cap on here, and I just very nicely hit it with my impact gun so that I don't strip them off because they've been in there a long time. Okay. So when you lift this, you want to be careful not to lose any of your clutch packs here. This smells so bad. Ooh. <coughs> 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 okay. Ooh, Jesus. Why does it smell so bad? So what you want to do is take all the clutch discs out of the cap here and put them back on here because where we want the shims to go is in between the cap and the very last clutch uh, plate that goes on the end of this because they're stationary. They don't rub against the face of this. And we don't want the shim to actually be spinning in there because it could tear the shim apart. And so that's goopy tacky fluid there. That is the the viscous fluid. So you want to line it up with there and then you have these little spiral wire spirals that go in between 
that and the next outer clutch plate. So then it goes outer. And then another ring. Okay, and then we will end, that's the inner, and then on top is the outer. We'll end with an outer, because that stays stationary with the carrier. And then, in between here, and the end cap is where we want our shims to be, because there's no rotation happening there. And that way, we know that we're not going to tear our shims up. So this is kind of the guessing portion of it. Uh, since each diff is worn a little bit different, uh, and your stack-ups are always a little bit different, it's kind of a guess as to how much shim goes into it. But basically what I do is I put some shim in, I put the cap on, torque all the bolts down for the ring gear, and then do the same torque check with the torque wrench to see where I'm at and then from there I'll add or subtract shim to get my desired breakaway torque and all this stuff there's a there's an o-ring here that o-ring and there's an o-ring inside that I'm gonna go ahead and replace because this fluid that's inside this viscous clutch is separate from the gear oil so the gear oil is not supposed to be getting in here it's supposed to be completely sealed off so all I did was I went on McMaster car which is an industrial um, supply website and I measured all the diameters and the um, thicknesses of the o-rings that I needed and ordered the o-rings instead of going through Subaru because they don't actually have part numbers for these because you can only buy the carrier through Subaru so I got all this stuff off McMaster car the O-rings that seal the bearing caps for the carrier, I got off McMaster car. Uh, and the shims, I also got off McMaster car. So it probably cost me a total with everything. Uh, probably cost me a total of about $40 to do all of this if you uh, order all the stuff off of an industrial website. This is like an 8,000 shim. This is also an 8. So should have like 16. That's about 16. Let's start off with the 16 thousandths and see what that does. I just kind of set it in the center there and you can kind of use the grease in there to hold it down. And then we're going to line that mark back up on the cap. And I took the seals out but I'm going to put my new seals in once I verified what my torque is. Um, and then uh, when I, before the final assembly, everything will be sealed and ready to go. So right now I have about 75 thousandths worth of shim inside of here, uh, which means that this clutch pack was probably really worn and it needed it anyway. But of course I have it shimmed over the standard breakaway torque from the factory and anytime you do that of course you could decrease the longevity of the differential but for our case we just like skids. So right now with the way that I have it set. About 70 foot pounds of breakaway torque, and then the harder I pull on it, the more torque it takes to make it slip, which means we're gonna have a nice acting differential um, that's gonna lock up on us pretty good. 
but it's still be able to turn in parking lots and uh, maneuver very well. So let's uh, put it back together. Okay, so what I'm doing now, I got my new O-rings. Replaced this guy and this guy with brand new O-rings uh, inside. Got the cap on. Got the, the four Phillips head screws back in. And what I'm doing is just cleaning off all the threads on the ring gear and cleaning off all the threads on the bolts because there were some factory Loctite uh, in those bolts. And so what I'm going to use is a medium strength uh, Loctite a thread locker uh, to put that back together. Just because you don't want the vibration of this thing rotating, backing the bolts out. That would be a mess. To 60 foot pounds and a cross pattern. So we're drawing it in even. Okay. So when we go to reinstall this, it's just reverse order of what we did the first time. So, carrier's in, face is clean. I got my new O-rings on the caps. I'm just gonna put my caps on. So this is the one mark. And so as a little bit of an extra preventative measure for leaking, if you take a look inside the housing here, these two bolts that hold the cap on are actually through holes into the housing. So they have a higher probability of leaking just because the O-ring seals around the cap but doesn't seal past the bolt circles. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of uh, RTV or gasket maker on the threads of those bolts so that those seal up a little bit better. The rest of the holes we don't really have to worry about because they're not through holes, it's just these two on each side of each cap. See how she does in the car. Alright guys, so we just got the diff back in the car. Uh, first impressions right now, I can't really tell a difference just kind of driving around normally. Pulling on to the highway though, I did kind of give it some gas and I noticed that the inside tire didn't break free as easily as it used to. It actually planted the car pretty good. So we're going to go play around with it a little bit and kind of see how it acts out on the road now. I can feel a difference going through the S turn back there. I came out of the apex on the last corner heavy on the throttle and typically it would have picked up that inside tire and started to spin it or at least I could feel it start to break free and I got nothing. So it's definitely acting a lot more like a limited slip. <laughs> guys huge difference in the launch uh, I'm not spinning one tire anymore and it's a definite almost instant lockup when you drop the clutch so I would say that this is pretty successful uh, and it's gonna really change the driving characteristics of the car so you know not bad for basically $40 in parts and uh, you know maybe six hours worth of work not too horrible to really change the the way that the car locks up and the way that it drives. So we're going to go play around with this some more. Uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. Check us out.